So you turn it off now. Okay. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday again. Welcome to APF Online Talk, session five. Okay, Mike, please. Okay, uh, Tom, are you ready? Yes. Okay. In Asia. Good evening, Asia. Buenos dias, Alfredo. Buenos dias, Mike. For Buenos dias. Tonight, we're going to Costa Rica. And our friend, uh, ABF friend, yeah. From wild. Uh, Mike, we cannot hear you. Mike's connection is not good. No. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce. Alfredo to you. You know, Costa Rica is a, a world famous bird watching destination. Bird life there are so diverse and so colorful. Birders and photographers will be definitely be amazed and satisfied if you visit there. So today we are very honored to have um, the senior bird guy, Alfredo Scott with us, telling the beautiful story sharing his appearance and sharing the beautiful verse and sharing why we must visit Alfredo. We must visit Costa Rica. Alfredo, please. Very good. Hello, everybody. There is a very, oh, this very good to see um, many faces I know in Costa Rica were in some bird fairs and in many other places. So, um, um, anyhow to uh, Philip, I see Philip here and uh, Victor, of course. Um, well, some, oh, Ixi and Michele, Tomusta. Hello. Muy bien. Very good. And I know, I know Kusum. I've seen Kusum before many times in different fairs. So, and Rahendra, of course, and um, Alan. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Alan. Yeah, good to see you, Alan. Very good. It's, uh, good. it's like having um, a reunion with friends. Exactly. So, welcome, everybody. Welcome. I hope you, you enjoy Costa Rica. Um, the things you have heard about Costa Rica, you, the thing you have seen in Costa Rica already. And um, in this lecture, I am going to talk about diversity in, in a very colorful way, because when you are in Costa Rica, um, colors are everywhere. Uh, the birds, the, uh, the frogs, the butterflies, the flowers, it's a very colorful place. So I saw a toucan. Hey, you. I saw a toucan there, I, the head of a toucan. Good. <laughs> Thank you. So let's start. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Oh, yeah. Very good. Excellent. So, um, again, as I was saying, when we're talking about um, Costa Rica, we're talking about the neotropics. Um, and I'm going to talk briefly about um, neotropics um, compared to the paleotropics and how do we protect uh, the tropics in Costa Rica and how is Costa Rica compared to other countries in the world. So again, the title of this lecture is Costa Rica as the most colorful option for birders and photographers. Anytime you have a question, uh, you need to, to me for uh, explain something that you don't understand clearly. Uh, please, please tell me anytime. Okay. So here, here, what you see is the neotropics uh, and the paleotropics in the world. So this green 
sorry, this purplish band right in the center is the tropical area, uh, which is between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, um, which represents about 40% of the territory of the world. This section, what you see here is the Paleotropic, uh, which is about 80% of Africa, um, a good part of India and Southeast Asia. Um, I don't think uh, Taiwan is considered um, in the tropics, but is very close to the tropics. But yeah. the other countries of the Philippines and Indonesia, um, Malaysia, Borneo, and, and many other countries in Asia are tropical. So you know that area well. And here in this other side of the world is where the neotropics are. And that includes uh, South America, the whole South America, right here where the arrow is, is Central America, just a little corner of United States where Florida is, and the Caribbean islands, um, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and two sides, um, the two coasts of Mexico, basically. So um, where is Costa Rica in, in the map is right here. So this is South America. This is Central America around this uh, blue circle. And in this green area is, you can see clearly, Costa Rica. Here is Panama, here is Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, which is one of the smallest countries in Central America is where it's located, very small. Let's go to the left again, and here where the arrow is, is Colombia. So you compare Colombia, you can see that Colombia is bigger than the whole Central America. Colombia is 22 times bigger than Costa Rica. Just, uh, to have a, an idea of how big other countries with a good reputation about uh, birding and biodiversity are. So the question is, is it good or not to be um, a small country like, like Costa Rica? Well, uh, I think it's good to be small and to be very diverse. Um, here we are 10 degrees north from the equator. And basically um, a country like Costa Rica with a huge biodiversity is very popular for tourism because they, uh, all the animals, birds and, and wildlife are uh, concentrated in a very small country. You don't have to drive long distances to get to a place from lodge to lodge. Um, sometimes you drive an hour, sometimes you, you, you drive a uh, couple hours, but in average, this is the time it takes to get from lodge to lodge compared to other countries. Um, I have traveled in, in, in South America, big countries in Asia or Africa, and some days it takes the, the whole day, six, seven hours to get to the next de destination. Uh, it doesn't happen in Costa Rica, you don't need that because you can travel coast to coast uh, from or border to border in a short, a short time because we are, we're very small. This is Costa Rica compared to um, some countries in Latin America. So you can see Costa Rica's uh, 51,000 square kilometers. Again, 22 times smaller than Colombia six times smaller than Ecuador, 29 times smaller than Brazil. And how about Costa Rica compared to uh, countries in Asia? So here it goes. Uh, Taiwan is smaller than Costa Rica. Uh, we have um, 925 species of birds, but Thailand is 10 times bigger than Costa Rica. And, um, 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 Philippines, six times bigger. China is 188 times bigger than Costa Rica. And if you compare the number of birds you have and the number of birds we have in Costa Rica, it's not a huge difference in uh, diversity, but it's, uh, it's a huge difference in size. 
So when, when you think of the concept of density, of um, diversity, uh, Costa Rica is very dense. Thinking in, in density, um, the number of birds divided by territory. Costa Rica is very, very dense, as, as you can see. Uh, this is Costa Rica coast to coast. Pacific side is in this side. The other side is the Caribbean. So you can drive coast to coast in five hours. Uh, how about boat border to border? Uh, in this side is Panama. Um, Nic uh, sorry, uh, Nicaragua in this side, Panama on the other side, and you go from border to border in 10 hours. So Costa Rica, again, is a very, very small country, and you can cover a good part of the country in a 10, 12-day uh, trip, easily. It's any questions so far? Everything clear? Very good. In Costa Rica, and I'm going to talk briefly about families of birds that you are going to see in this part of the world that you don't see anywhere else. Um, Africa, Asia, or Australia don't have the families of birds I am going to show you briefly. And again, they are uh, very colorful. I am not just selecting the colorful members of that family. Uh, tanagers, all the members of that family are um, amazingly colorful, like uh, the toucans you are going to see, like the hummingbirds you are going to see. Um, um, I don't, I don't see, I don't find an explanation of why the birds in this part of the world are so colorful compared to uh, other other families of birds in the neotropics. But there, there, there must be a reason. That I don't know what's what's the reason. I'm a field biologist, and I have I haven't found an explanation of why the snakes, the frogs, the flowers, the, the, the birds are so colorful in this part of the world. But we don't have to have an explanation, just enjoy it. But um, again, uh, the family of tanagers, they are medium-sized birds and they are fruit eaters. And they are very common. Wherever we go in Costa Rica, lowlands and middle elevations or high elevations, we always find tanagers. Um, like shining honey creeper, um, crimson colored tanager. They come to the feeders usually. They come to the feeders. So for photographers, they are the photographers love them because you can see them really, really close. Silver throated tanager, um, red leg honey creeper. This one is very, very, very small. Shining honey creeper, the female. Look at this one, green honey creeper. Uh, the the flycatchers in Costa Rica are different than the flycatchers in Asia. Um, it's a totally different family. They have the same name, flycatchers, but they are not related. This one is the largest flycatcher we have in Costa Rica, the Great Kiskiti. Um, it's it's handsome, but nothing compared to this, which Ooh. is the royal flycatcher. Um, we have seen, I think, royal flycatcher in, in all your trips, Victoria, in Costa Rica, but you don't see the crest open um, usually, only when the bird is um, um, excited, they open the crest, but it's, it's a beauty. Those are puff birds. They um, feed on insects, basically, and titaris. This is one group of birds that everybody wants to see when they come to the tropics is our counterpart of uh, your hornbills. Um, uh, the bill is smaller, but again, the birds are more and more colorful. This one is endemic, the firebill aracari, uh, green um, emerald toucan. Those um, colored aracaris are very, very common and Again, this is a beautiful group of birds, um, not easy for uh, photographers. You need patience, a decent camera, and good luck. Because taking a good picture of a hummingbird 
is not easy. The, um, Ixi and Michele can tell us about that because uh, it was not it was not easy. The first time you see hummingbirds, and there are so many that you don't know uh, which one is the one you want for for a picture. They, they're, they're like flies flying around you, and every every bird is an opportunity for a nice picture. And you have so many around that the um, photographers who come to the tropic by the first time they are uh, confused because uh, the, the, the diversity and the, all the colors around you. Um, this is long-tailed hermit. This is an endemic from uh, the highlands. Um, I need to emphasize that all the birds you see in this presentation are common birds. So um, are birds that you see in every trip in Costa Rica. I am not showing you only the beautiful ones that, 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 that are not common. All these birds are very, very common. So uh, they are going to be in, in your list if you come to Costa Rica easily. Like Jacobin, snowcap, everybody wants to see snowcap. Crown wood nymph. The group of moth moths, they are, they feed on insects. They have a serrated bill. See, the biggest of um, mud muds and the turquoise brow. This one reminds me um, your rollers in Asia, but it's a completely different family. Yeah, uh, Euphonia's um, golden brow chlorophonia is endemic to Costa Rica. Tony cap euphonia. Uh, the family of mannequins, they are very, very common. So I'm going to talk briefly about the diversity in Costa Rica um, compared to other destinations or other places. Um, Costa Rica, as you can see, is uh, have 10% um, of the world's uh, butterfly species. Uh, they are here. So if you take a birding trip uh, to Costa Rica, you are not uh, finding only birds, you see many other things, and butterflies are are common in and everywhere basically. So uh, butterflies common. This is the, the the number of mammals we have: uh, 13, 12, or 13 percent of all the the bats in the world are here. Um, uh, and salamanders, uh, almost 60 percent are endemics. Uh, lots of frogs and, and toads, reptiles, lizards. Um, Costa Rica is very rich in snakes. People don't like snakes much, but um, Costa Rica is very rich in general in, in many things. So again, when we go on a birding trip, we see many things um, besides the birding trip because we are in the forest. Um, this is important. We have in Costa Rica in this uh, tiny little country, more species of birds than Canada, United States and North America. Uh, of Mexico together. So we have about 10% of the world species in Costa Rica. Um, more focused on birds. This is the number of species we have. 925 species in Costa Rica, 82 uh, regional endemics. Um, uh, seven species are only here in Costa Rica. 53 species of hummingbirds. For the ones that have never visited Costa Rica, if you come to Costa Rica in a birding trip or for photography, you have a good chance to see uh, probably 30 uh, to 35 different species of hummingbirds in a trip. So uh, easily you get more than 50% of all the species of hummingbirds of Costa Rica in one trip. Um, briefly, um, um, this is a short explanation of um, the reason, one of the reasons why Costa Rica is uh, so diverse in Costa Rica and the western part of Panama is the newest land in for the whole continent. So when we're talking about um, old land like um, um, the Andes uh, in South America or the old mountains in North America, um, we're not talking about Costa Rica. The, the process of formation of Costa Rica 
in a corner of Panama was finished about 5 million years ago and in geological time, that's, that's nothing. So Costa Rica is, is very new. And this bridge between North America and South America was finished exactly where Costa Rica and part of Panama uh, is they're located right now. So Costa Rica is, is right here and you can see how that happens. There are animals and plants and birds coming down from North America and they use Costa Rica as a natural bridge in their way to South America. And exactly happened from South America to North America. They used Costa Rica. Some of these animals, uh, vertebrates in general, continue up north or down south, but they stay in Costa Rica. So Costa Rica also work as a natural filter for uh, many organisms, but they stay in Costa Rica. So again, Costa Rica was a bridge and a filter. And, and that's uh, one of the main explanations of how Costa Rica, why Costa Rica is so diverse and is shown in high endemism, uh, high geographical variation and high density of families and species. Costa Rica can be divided in five main areas. This is Costa Rica. This is the map of Costa Rica, geographical map, and you can see Costa Rica clearly. Nicaragua, again, in the northern side of the country, Panama on the other side, Pacific Ocean on one side, Caribbean on the other side. So all the areas in green, like here, this is lowlands. The other section is the mountains. When I say mountains is 600 meters from um, above the sea level to uh, 1500 meters and highlands from 1500 meters to 3000 or higher. So I am going to go um, briefly from um, area to area to show what do you expect in Costa Rica if you come here in every area. Again, if you come to Costa Rica in, in a trip of 12 days, two weeks, you can cover all the country, all the main five sections briefly. We usually start here where the arrow is going around, which is where uh, Central Valley, the capital San Jose is located you land here. So you spend the first night here. And then we go over the mountains and you see some mountain uh, birds to get to the Caribbean side the first two days. And then we move to the highlands for another two days. And then to the dry Northern Pacific. And finally, the Southern or Central um, Pacific. Again, because Costa Rica is very small the driving time is not long and you can cover um, a good part of the country in a trip. And that's, a, that's the best uh, way to do it, moving from place to place every two days. This way you can cover uh, all the habitats and see most of the birds possible. This is the kind of forest you see on the Caribbean side. Uh, pretty much the kind of forest you see in many countries in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. There's large forests, big trees, very dense vegetation. And uh, this is what you have in many of the lodges we use. They are, uh, or just a platform, or you can take pictures from the restaurant um, to the feeders. In that case, in this hotel, the feeder is uh, on the left and the birds are, are really close, four meters away. Sometimes I love this picture because sometimes you're you're having breakfast or, or you're or you're eating and the bird comes to the feeder and you have to jump and take a picture like this, like this guy. This is a, Ch a Chinese group who visited Costa Rica. Uh, and this guy is taking pictures with the right hand and, and holding the, the breakfast with the, with the left hand. And that happens all the time because the birds are, are there uh, all day long. And some species you see on the Caribbean side. Uh, this is the largest toucan you see in Costa Rica. Uh, big birds. It is one of the, uh, the largest, the great curassow, um, spotted ant bird. I love this group of birds. And 
maybe in the future, if you have a chance, uh, uh, I would love to um, uh, have a chance to um, give another lecture about the, the Anders, um, yeah, because it's my favorite group. Uh, Anders have a behavior that uh, uh, no other bird in the world have developed. And the ant birds are called ant birds because they are ant followers. They don't feed on ants. They, uh, when the the army the army ants are moving through the uh, through the forest, they are looking for uh, prey. Uh, army ants are predators, so many little animals they try to escape from the ants, and that's why the ant birds. And, and this is only one species, the spotted ant bird. There are many many different species of ant birds. Those all those ant birds are following the ants because they catch the insects that are flushed by the ants. And this is an amazing adaptation that you only see in this forest in the neotropics and you don't see it anywhere else. So when we find ant birds are not the most colorful birds, but uh, they are fascinating because they don't pay attention to you. They are pay attention to the things they can catch. Um, hawks, especially on the Caribbean side, we have a huge migration from North America in October, November. We have millions, literally millions of um, different species of hawks that are migrating uh, from North America. So Caribbean side is a good place to be in migration. Uh, obviously, uh, frogs, uh, poisonous frogs. This one is not poisonous. Uh, and tree frogs like this one. You can see this one in, in several places in different lodges and in the forest at night. You don't see it during the day. Um, Wildlife, we have the six species of uh, wildcats uh, in Costa Rica. We have them in Costa Rica. And we have uh, in some places, we, we have hides. We don't use hides uh, all the time because you don't need it. But in some places we have hides. And like this one. And they are taking uh, pictures of um, a very special bird. It's one of my favorite birds. Um, for the ones that have not visited Costa Rica, but they have been to um, countries in Asia or Europe looking for vultures, uh, you know that the concept of vulture is stuck in a, a, a not a very attractive bird. They are very interesting. They're be, uh, we need the vultures as part of our uh, the sanitation department. I know that. But um, vultures in general, they are not beautiful. But let me tell you something. Um, we are in the neotropics. So everything is colorful and everything is beautiful here, including the vultures. So the bird I'm going to um, introduce you now is a wow bird, but you cannot believe that that bird uh, is a vulture. And this is the bird. It's amazing. I have not retouched this picture at all. This is exactly like uh, the bird looks. And um, it's one of the um, few occasions that we use um, hides. Um, they, the people, they attract that bird and you can see um, several of, of them. The last time the um, the, um, the Victor came here and with the group. We saw, I don't remember, five, six of them um, in, in the same spot. It's, it's an amazing, um, stunning bird and relatively common in Costa Rica, uh, but in this place uh, is, is very common. Northern part of Costa Rica, this is the driest part of the country. So it looks different. Is beautiful but drier and the species you see in this part of the country um, are very local you don't see them in, you don't see them um, everywhere um, something I need to emphasize also is um, that I am not a professional photographer the people who uh, have visited Costa Rica with me they know that this is the size of my camera so um, all the pictures you see in this presentation, except the hummingbirds in flight, but all the pictures you see in this presentation, 
have been taken by my tiny little camera. I am not a professional photographer at all, not even close. So if the pictures I have in this presentation are decent pictures and I have been, have been taken by my little camera, just imagine the kind of pictures you can take with your cameras. Um, again, I love this picture. I took this picture from uh, a group of um, in China. This is the the serious pictures. Uh, this, sorry, cameras you see in in Costa Rica when some some groups come, and you can take pictures from uh, the car, um, or you can walk. I took the the picture of uh, one of the members of uh, the last trip we have in Costa Rica. It looks like an astronaut. Um, but um, um, in Costa Rica, the the uh, the rule is that you are free. You can uh, walk, um, and you usually do the uh, the birding or the photography uh, trips um, walking. In in many countries, in South America, uh, is not uh, is not the case mostly but the the forest is very dense so you have to be careful where you go and, and not to go um, in asia especially in africa uh, people don't get off the car and walk the trails because they are uh, lions bears buffaloes rhinos etc but in costa rica you can walk and go whatever you want and usually we uh, we take the tour uh, with uh, with a birding of a photography guide uh, like me, uh, but many times in their and the time off, the people go uh, uh, on their own, the trails, uh, uh, the, the gardens, uh, the lodge. Uh, but people spend good time on their own and it's completely safe. Some of the species you see in that part of the country in the northern Pacific. This is the largest kingfisher. This is our largest stork, um, one of the most beautiful matmots we have. This, um, the spoonbills in Costa Rica are not white, they're pink. Caracara, uh, this is another common raptor, and owls, of course. The central um, uh, and southern Pacific, which is another different habitat, you see different birds in every section of the country we visit. Oh, those uh, the family of the mannequins they are it's the colors of those birds are crazy they look like they're painted um, and this one is endemic to uh, Costa Rica this trogon is endemic to that part of the country uh, only and this is the smallest of the kingfishers uh, for the whole continent that the American pygmy kingfisher scarlet macaws the first day you get to that part of the country and you really want to see a scarlet macaws. They are big and they're very noisy. But after the second day, you don't want to see more. You are up to here of scarlet macaws. They are very, very common. So the chance to see all of these birds is, again, those are birds that you see almost every day. In every place we go, they are, they are local birds, but all these birds are, are common. Uh, raptors, of course, this, is, this one is very common. That's why the, the name is common black hawk. And uh, we have monkeys. We have four species of monkeys. The one on the left is the smallest, the squirrel monkey, and the spider monkey on the right, which is the largest. Um, uh, reptiles on that part of the country, uh, almost a must to see is this tour that takes you uh, on the Tarkulis River to see uh, birds, but also crocodiles, the uh, largest um, population of crocodiles are in that part of the country. This is the kind of boats we use. Uh, you see that are very comfortable for people and also for photographers. They are, um, they're room, roomy boats for, for photographers. Um, and obviously, uh, again, the attraction is, I don't know if you can recognize the monster in the picture, and I'm not talking about Victor. I'm talking about this one here. <laughs> this again, um, you see big, big crocs and uh, freshwater birds, and and because that uh, the river takes you to different habitats: uh, mangrove forest, riverine forest, and the shorebirds and 
several other things. And again, um, this is a group from, from Thailand, um, from uh, Niwat organized this group, good friend from, from Thailand. And again, this is the rule. People see uh, the birds uh, along the road, they get off and they took pictures whenever we see birds. So how long it takes to get from place to place? Uh, well, uh, from point A to point B, as a toucan flies, I could say, well, it's gonna take an hour and 30 minutes, but you never know because birding is so good on the way that this, what you see in this picture is what it happens many times. So the people see something, they get off and they start taking pictures. So uh, the central uh, section of the country, which are the mountains from five or 600 meters above the sea level to uh, 1,500 meters. Uh, right in the center of the country. Um, volcanoes. Um, the next trip we are going to take uh, next year uh, with Victor, we're going to visit this area. We have 200 different uh, volcanic formations in Costa Rica, five active volcanoes. This one is the most active volcano in the country, which is the Arnal uh, volcano. Um, waterfalls, uh, they are very, very common in Costa Rica. Again, we use heights in the mountains sometimes, but usually heights are not necessary in Costa Rica because what we usually do is walk the forest uh, or uh, walk the trails and the birds are there. This is some of the birds you see. Um, something I would like to mention um, before I, I continue is um, for one for a reason I don't I don't know. Uh, birds in Costa Rica are not shy. I have birded in many countries in um, Southeast Asia. In for a reason, the birds are hard to see, or, or they are very shy. Um, uh, the same experience in Indonesia, Borneo, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, China. Um, the birds uh, are hard to see and hard to photograph. Uh, um, in Costa Rica, the birds come really close to you and they are not, they're not shy. Um, Red-headed barbet, bird, common bird, you're going to see that one almost for sure. Uh, the Oriole family is completely different than uh, the Orioles in the old world. Um, Raptors, again, those raptors live only in, in the mountains and the biggest member of the Orioles, um, this one, um, red-headed barbet, female, the frogs are very colorful. This, even the snakes are beautiful and um, the reptiles. The mountains, finally. The landscape is really nice, really beautiful. The colors of the vegetation, it's amazing. The colors of the sky and the highlands. You have to wear special clothing uh, because it could be, uh, get cold in some places. Um, endemic hummingbirds in the highlands. Um, woodpecker, this one is common, common. This one is an endemic um, hummingbird. Flycatcher, this is not a real flycatcher, that's just the name. Green thorn tail and flame colored tanager. But if you go to the highlands, there is a bird that everybody wants to see. And this is the resplendent quetzalis, which is one of the most beautiful birds in the world and is common in the highlands. If you go to the right place, um, the birds, uh, the males and the females, they, uh, they help on the nest. And this is when you see a nesting season. So if you want to take uh, good pictures of um, the quetzals in nesting, in nesting season, what you have to do is just sit and wait uh, and look at the tree where the bird is going to come early in the morning. And the guide, you set your camera pointing to uh, where the yellow circle is and you leave your cameras there waiting for the bird to come, the guide is going to tell you, uh, at, um, get ready, the bird is coming, bird is coming. And when you see the bird flying to the nest, you start shooting. Da, 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 da. And sooner or later you get these kind of pictures. Um, 
on the left of the picture is where the nest is. So you cut it and what you see is just the bird in flight. But this is the kind of pictures you take uh, in nesting system. What I'm going to go really uh, quick about this because this is just general information. How do we do, uh, or what do we do with the forest? We have in the um, biodiversity, we protect it, we study it, and we use the resources in a sustainable way because 30% of our land area is protected in national parks and Indian uh, reservations. And the reason the country uh, has so many birds um, is because hunting is against the law. Any kind of hunting, you cannot kill even a dove or uh, nothing. Uh, hunting is against the law. We don't eat birds and um, selling birds or put the birds in cages is totally against the law. This is the, um, the number of national parks we have and this map is not showing the private reserves or the Indian reserves. So uh, the bird is covered with uh, uh, all kinds of uh, protection. Um, how do we explain that Costa Rica is focused in protection um, and, and why the, the tourism is so successful in Costa Rica as the main source of income? It has to be with the education of people. The illiteracy is not higher than 3%. We have uh, good infrastructure. Uh, Costa Rica is um, economically and, and politically speaking uh, very stable. Is, is a safe country and the accommodation in general in Costa Rica is really good. For birders and photographers, is the quality of the services. Um, good guys, good accommodation, uh, the trails are in very good conditions. And this is important. If you are coming to Costa Rica and you're planning to uh, visit Costa Rica on a trip and when you're when we're talking about birding and photography, we have to talk also about uh, traveling because once you have covered uh, your country or nearby countries, you are thinking on where to go, where to go next. Um, Costa Rica is a very interesting option for uh, birders and photographers from all over the world. And I don't know if you have an idea of how much you have to spend in Costa Rica if you take a trip here. Um, take a guess. You have um, any idea how much you need to come to Costa Rica for two weeks? Well, it's two hundred dollars a day, or one hundred and eighty euros. Uh, what uh, those two hundred dollars include? Um, lodging, three meals a day, alcoholic drinks, our uh, birding guide transportation and air conditioning van, plus park fees, water, shuttle to airport, private boat, private use of, of the height. All what I mentioned for uh, $200 a day is very reasonable and it includes uh, literally everything. So briefly, this is um, the, the pictures of the, the, the restaurants and the accommodation and the whole of the lodges we use in the highlands on the Caribbean side, is they're very nice. They're very uh, fancy as they are the, the top uh, lodges on town in each area. This is the one, um, the dry forest, the central Pacific, the mountains we're going to go uh, with Victor to this one uh, next year. All the lodges we used have Wi-Fi connection, hot water, swimming pool. Um, to be honest, most of the birders or photographers never use the swimming pool, uh, but they have uh, treated puddle water, electricity, bar heaters in case of cold temperature in the highlands, massage of spa services and coffee stations for early tours. So we use very nice lodges and also um, I am very proud to say that the most beautiful checklists probably in the planet are the ones we use there. There's, it's, it's a new uh, bird every year. I, I'm not sure which one is the, the one I'm going to use for the next year, but Victor helped us to produce this one, which is in Chinese. And then Victor did it. Uh, try to imagine 
all of the birds we have in Costa Rica translated to Chinese. Uh, um, that's amazing that Victor did that. And this is Birds of Costa Rica. Um, this is uh, the, um, the book we use. Um, when is a good time to come? Um, Any time in Costa Rica is a good time to come. Um, the birding is productive all year round. There are two seasons, uh, dry season, December to April, rainy season, May to November. Um, in um, our dry season, there are um, from May to November, uh, sorry, from December to April, we have 100 species of migrant birds who arrive from North America. But in, in my experience, um, birding is good all year round. Um, I had once in September, rainy season, in the middle of rainy season, this couple of um, um, very serious birders from Taiwan. Um, one, of, one of them was uh, the Dr. Lin, um, which is pretty well known in, in, in Taiwan, in Asia. He has all the pitas in the world in his list. And they came in September. Um, we walk the trails uh, flooded uh, with water um, uh, almost up to uh, their, uh, our knees. And we got 420 birds in the worst season for, for birding. So again, um, birding in Costa Rica is, is, is really good anytime. Uh, but if you want to see uh, uh, migrants or uh, more uh, uh, higher chances for dry weather, is um, December to April. So this is um, the way to contact us, or I think the best way is ask Victor. Victor has visited Costa Rica several times. He is he's learning in Spanish. He knows more Spanish than my Chinese, which is very poor. So it's a very good source of information. So for any question or anything you need uh, to know about Costa Rica, you can contact us or uh, ask Victor or, or any, anyone you see uh, in this lecture today, you can ask, hey, um, Ixi or Micheli, how was your experience in Costa Rica? If you're in Korea and you contact Dr. Key, you can ask him that there are several pictures that people have visited Costa Rica in this group and uh, you can ask them about their experience in Costa Rica. And this is what we say hello and, uh, and goodbye. Pura vida, this very, is a very Costa Rican expression. So this is the, uh, the end of the presentation. And uh, now is uh, time for uh, questions. Thank you. All right, Pura vida. Pura vida. Thank you very much. So, My pleasure. Presentation, thank you. Uh, questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this mic. Uh, just show you my face because I'm actually lying on the bed, right? So it doesn't really look good. So I was shut down. And I have to say, this is really a fantastic uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And I hardly can meet, can believe there is such a beautiful place and it's almost like heaven to all the bird photographer. So definitely after the coronavirus, the first thing to do is travel to Costa Rica. Thank you very much, Alfredo. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, again, one of the things that I, I would love to mention is that Costa Rica is one of the, the few uh, countries in the world with uh, no army. There is zero army in Costa Rica. It's against the law. So a good part of our national budget goes to education and medical cares. So uh, the wise use of that money have uh, um, they put Costa Rica in the situation that we have now. And Costa Rica is all the Costa Ricans are talking about the coronavirus, and they are um, like everybody around the world are very concerned about. The, the number of uh, cases and things. And I tell to my friends, look, look around you to the other countries. There is nothing what we have here 
average, uh, we have only 16 deaths in Costa Rica. This is nothing. So um, uh, compared to the countries in South America, uh, in, in, uh, in, in North America, Costa Rica in, in terms of coronavirus and the way we have treated the, uh, the situation, it's, it's outstanding. So uh, talking about um, uh, one of the safest countries to visit, um, even in, in terms of diseases is, is Costa Rica. Okay. Hey, so um, one of question from Facebook. Uh, she's asking, is it an easy birding in Costa Rica or you need good physical condition? Okay, you, it's, it's very, it's very, very easy. Yeah, um, the trails are easy. The trails are, uh, in most places we go, are flat, flat like a table. Um, um, we do good part of the, of the birding uh, this way or on a boat uh, like you saw, but in, in my opinion, uh, almost anybody can do it. We have um, uh, uh, the average people who uh, uh, take birding trips in Costa Rica all are um, over 60. Yeah especially from North America and from um, United Kingdom. Um, and they find uh, birding in Costa Rica very easy because the trails, again, the trails are flat, the trails are in very good conditions. Uh, we don't walk through the forest in the middle of a jungle almost uh, never. So uh, in my opinion, is, is birding in Costa Rica is very easy. So you don't have to, again, to find, to see the birds, you don't have to walk through the woods. Um, birding in Costa Rica is so easy. That's just walking uh, the trail. Uh, the birds are close to the trail. So uh, you don't need a machete to cut the trees to find the bird at the, at, at, at the end. Uh, it's very easy. Okay, thank you. And uh, do you have a, a Facebook page? Yeah. I am working um, on, on Facebook uh, right now. I am improving the page uh, right now. So um, I don't know if it's, I am, I'm going to keep the same page I have uh, or I'm going to change it. So um, I, am, I, am not, I cannot give you this information right now, but I can um, send this information to you, Victor, if uh, somebody asks you because I'm working on that right now. Sure. So we will post it on Asian Prefer FB page. And uh, our friend Chuck Eston from Malaysia, he is asking, you, you, you didn't mention about lizards. Are they poisonous? They are only um, two species of poisonous lizards in this part of the world. And that is that one is called the Gila monster. And that one lives in um, part of Texas, the upper part of Guatemala, and that's it. So um, there are only two species of, if we're talking about lizards. Um, the rest of the lizards we have for the whole continent, and most of the lizards in the world are not poisonous. So we don't have poisonous lizards in, in Costa Rica. We have uh, 63 different species of lizards and no, they're not poisonous. Okay, Even the you. frogs, for the ones that are looking for, for uh, poisonous frogs, we have very poisonous frogs in Costa Rica, but they don't, they don't bite you. They secrete the, the toxin through the skin so you can um, uh, have it in your hand. I, I've done it many times. I don't recommend you to do that if you don't know how to handle them. But, but again, um, uh, most of the poisonous reptiles and and amphibious, uh, they won't kill you. Great. And um, someone asked that, um, how many days are needed if you want to see 
all 35 species of hummingbirds. Oh, yeah. From 10, from 10 days to two weeks, um, okay. if you are specialized in hummingbirds and you come to Costa Rica uh, as your main focus is hummingbirds, um, we can uh, get you um, 30, 35 species of hummingbirds in eight days. Um, but obviously, if you're coming from the other side of the world, you want to see more than just hummingbirds and you want to spend yes. uh, more days than just uh, eight or 10. That's why the average um, trip in Costa Rica is two weeks. Okay. Uh, another reason is because it's, uh, it's so affordable that why to uh, come to Costa Rica for eight days if uh, two weeks uh, is... It's cheap. <laughs> so uh, our friend from Bhutan, Chubzam, has something to say to you. Chubzam? Hi, Chubzam. Hi, Chubzam. Hello. Hello. Oh. Can, Hello. can you hear me? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, the invitation, uh, Victor. It was a wonderful presentation, and it's good to see um, uh, Michele and uh, Ixi <laughs> after a long time. <laughs> really? So, yeah, it's a wonderful uh, way to connect, and I really enjoyed the enjoyed the show. And you know, <laughs> Alfredo, thank you very much for the information on uh, Costa Rica. You know, it's always been uh, a country that I wanted to visit. And hopefully, the, you know, uh, I'll, be, I'll be there soon, you know. <laughs> a, friend of, uh, a friend of mine just returned from uh, Costa Rica, Bhutanese, and he's, uh, I heard a lot uh, from him as well. You know, it's, it's his uh, first uh, visit. Wonderful birds uh, and uh, beautiful colors, I heard, you know. And uh, from the presentation, I think, uh, Alfredo, we share something uh, in similar, you know, like uh, the law of the country. And uh, <clears throat> I also heard that uh, you have uh, no armies and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it seems like a peaceful country, you know, with wonderful wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chubzan is one of our good friends from Bhutan and uh, we are inviting him to to do the presentation, maybe in late August or September, uh, Mike is arranging it. So no, uh, no worries. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invite, uh, for the uh, opportunity, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, share information on uh, uh, on Bhutan. <laughs> okay, uh, Alfredo, would you please uh, read your uh, email again? Okay, let me, let me try to find it. Did you have a question though? Yeah, I did. Ooh. I want to say something. Screen sharing, wait. The email. Yeah, yeah no, the I email page. Add, add something. Okay. Uh, is here. Yes. Yeah. Info. Oh. Yeah. oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, there. Info. Pretty long. Info at watching birds. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Info at watching birds. Costa Rica. Email of Alfredo. Okay. Thank you very much. What's your question? No, I just wanted to add something. Go add. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear yeah, me? I can hear you. Okay. I just want to add. Alfredo said the trails were very easy, you know, and uh, I was very happy because I could do all the trails. But there was one park we went to with the one with Octavio, with Tavo, um, Alfredo. Was that the Echo Park? Do you know that we saw a bird watcher on a wheelchair 
the path was wheelchair friendly. Do you remember, yeah. Alfredo? Yes. Mm. Um, some of the paths we used are uh, wheelchair friendly yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. And there are coffee dispensers almost everywhere. Every lodge or every oh. place we would go to. Um, I recommend this too with Alfredo highly because Alfredo takes very good care of you. And everything he said in his... Uh, everything he said in his... Uh, his uh, presentation. Pres presentation today is true. The hotels were very good. The food was very good. All the other guides that uh, took care of us were very good. I love the driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, what, what was his joke? Uh, uh, my name is Walter, but if you don't like the way I drive, my name is Pedro, Pedro Perez. Perez. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> Yeah, I would suggest everyone go to Costa Rica. Yes, and go with Alfredo Scott, who's Antonio Berderas. Oh God! Oh, oh yeah. Oh, are you gonna sing a song for us, Alfredo? Thank you. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Now he's shy, man. Now he's shy. Can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. My name is Andy Lee. Eh? I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. From your presentation, you said that you have uh, 925 species of birds in Costa Rica. How many of these are resident birds? Most of the birds um, are resident birds. There is um, a list of about 100 um, and a bit more that are um, migrants from North America and some from South America. Um, but also uh, some of the migrants, they like Costa Rica so much that they decide to stay for two seasons. And um, so um, we have the breeding um, migrants and non-breeding migrants, but in general, uh, not to uh, 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 make the thing very complicated. In general, we're talking about 140, 50 uh, migrants uh, coming from uh, North America, mostly. Especially uh, shorebirds. Most of the uh, plovers and sandpipers in Costa Rica are migrants. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, um, any questions? Okay. So, Victor, will you be organizing one after the pandemic is <laughs> <It's> over? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> let's go back to Costa Rica again. Yes, let's. Yeah, I'd love to go back there. Yeah. I'd love to go. More than welcome. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Last one. Okay, last one, Andy, please. At the highland, yeah, which is about 1,005 to 3,000 meters, Am I correct? Yes. So what yes. is transport? Are we going to hide up or <laughs> also use a, 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 a jeep or a van to get up to this uh, budding area? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if, 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 I, if I heard the last part of the question. Uh, budding at the highlands, huh? do we go by car or do we go by foot? Oh, no. Um, we walk, we walk. We walk. Um, um, the, the thing is, <laughs> we go We go by car to the birding, but all the birding spots. Um, there is, for example, there is an area where we go, which is one of the highest points in Costa Rica. We're talking about 3,500 uh, meters to look for some special birds. And we go by car there. And then we park the car. And once you are in the top of the mountains, that area is flat again. So you walk for a short distance looking for the birds you want to see or photograph. So to every place, uh, we go by, by car. And once we get to the place, we walk. So we always have facilities nearby. We have the car or uh, restrooms uh, and water 
close by in case that you are tired and you are um, you don't want to uh, do more birding for a while or something the facilities are are closed to us all the time so don't think that you have to walk up the mountains uh, for for miles to get to, to the top of the mountain so we use transportation to get to make it easy especially for the photographers that are carrying mm -hmm. heavy uh, equipment we have to uh, find a way to make the things easier for you guys you know if xc can do it everybody can do it <laughs> is that right yeah I, yeah no, but actually and, and, that's yeah. true there's no like climbing it's not hard the paths aren't terrible it's basically you drive to a point get out walk come back and if it's another like location you just get back in drive more the only unexpected long walk we had was when the road was closed because they were laying asphalt remember yeah <laughs> and yeah. instead of sitting down and just wasting time we all said let's walk and we did and that's right? it yeah right and we did that. see some birds along the way that's where i saw the swallowtail sw the swallowtail, swallowtail hawk. hawk yeah and right. you were carrying big and you were carrying big cameras let me tell you yes. so big camera yeah yeah okay the, the two well there's something but... something I'll, i'll promise you is right. the birds are going the birds are going to make you sweat absolutely because absolutely. And not because you have to walk long distances, it's because they are everywhere and they are so active that you, that, that makes you, uh, you're going to be very busy. I promise you that. Well, hey, also a special note for the bats. We didn't expect to see like my dream bat, but we saw ah, it. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the white bat, the ghost bat, right? Yeah, the yeah. cotton ball bats yeah. and then the ghost bat. And then the sloth, the sloths, yeah, yeah, yeah right. And then the leaf cutter ants, everything. everything. It was so cool. Go to, go to Costa Rica. Go. <laughs> it was so nice. Hey, uh, there are two questions from our friend uh, Herbert from U Uganda. Oh, uh, Herbert. Yeah, uh, I know the, Herbert. The visa application, visa requirement. Yeah, there are um, countries like. Um, Um, Taiwan and um, let me see. I, I think I Taiwan. They don't need a visa to come to Costa Rica. Um, uh, Africa and Uganda. They need visa. Um, Taiwan, Philippines, or Malaysia. They don't need visa. People from India, Indonesia, Uganda. Uh, they need visa but it's usually easy to get. Okay. And the second question from Herbert is that, uh, is, are there any uh, women bird guys or a uh, woman bird club, women birders in Costa Rica? Yes, uh, the thing is, um, Costa Rica is a small in size. Um, the population is only five million. So um, all the birders, they know to each other. So we don't have many uh, uh, birding associations. So the people in, in every association, which are basically two or three, they are um, uh, men and women together. So there is not an um, uh, association or a group of just women. Um, some of um, the good birders I know, um, Mercedes is is uh, is a birder girl I know. She got two years ago the largest number of birds in in that that year. So oh, wow. she, uh, she won. Uh, um, yeah. It's not a it's not a competition, but you know people try to get as many birds as possible in in one year. So she she won that that year uh, two years ago. So yes, we have excellent um, birders in, in Costa Rica women. Yes. Yeah, Alfredo. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hi, hi. Go, go ahead. Yes. Uh, just, just one question. Uh, do you have uh, online visa applications, or do uh, do you all arrange it for us? Because I'm from Sri Lanka. Because we need. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yes. How about the uh, visa for Sri Lankans? Okay. The, in Costa Rica, we don't have um, embassy for uh, Sri Lanka or India. So yeah. any application, uh, you have to contact the embassy um, in probably the one in Colombia um, is the one, the, the, cl uh, the closest we have from Costa Rica because when, when I went to India, I sent my passport to uh, Colombia. Um, so we so don't probably, have, uh, Colombia also, we don't have an embassy in Sri Lanka. We know. have to send it somewhere else, I think, I, I don't know. India maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. What I know for sure is in Costa Rica, there is not an embassy. So um, so we should do is look for the closest embassy to Costa Rica or to you. Yeah, and for me, it's uh, the nearest. So that will take a long time for a uh, uh, long time to proceed. No, you have to first oh, get the yeah. visa and book the tickets. Yeah, well, in, in my experience, it was it was very fast. It took less than a week to send the visa, get it ready, and get it back. Um, you have to send the passport. You, yeah, yeah. I sent I sent the passport to Colombia, and they got it almost uh, approved in in almost immediately. I heard yes. this. Okay. Okay. Was, thank you. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's about time to finish our presentation. We thank Alfredo again, and we'll see you next week. So, pura vida. Pura vida. Hello, pura vida. Pura vida. Thanks, sir. Good thank morning. You. Thank you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good yeah. night. Besos y abrazos yeah. para Charo. <laughs> uh -huh. Gracias, gracias. Uh -huh. Okay, see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Oh, Philip! <laughs> <laughs> right. wait, 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 one more thing to do before okay. we go. We must take a group photo, okay? Oh, okay. 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 So the trick is that Thank you. please look at the camera and smile and don't move. Ready? Okay. One, two, three, go. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you guys next week. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for inviting Bye. us, Victor. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.